One of the essential things as Franciscans is that we are brothers to all. So many places that help the poor are institutions that are about providing resources. And our focus primarily is about, yes, we wish to provide resources. We also provide connection. Because when Jesus came preaching the gospel, Jesus came to the people on the margins. He came to the people that everyone else said were a waste, right? People who were prostitutes, people who were thieves, people who were political zealots, people who were rejected by large parts of society. And look what happened when he was sitting down eating with these people. The, the scribes and the Pharisees were scandalized. How can he sit down and eat with these people? Doesn't he know what kind of people these are? And so for us, it's important that we too, in our own time, go to the people who are on the margins, people who are overlooked. When you look at the lives of the saints, our Capuchin saints, they often would try to be present to people. We talk about a ministry of presence. So it's not just about the things that we do for people, it's also who we are with them. And primarily that means being a brother to all. And this was the experience of Francis too. Francis, um, he went to the leper. If there's anyone marginalized in his time, it was a leper. Right? And he was completely ostracized from the human community. And, it was these types of people that Francis sought out. And so if we're, going to, if we're going to be faithful to the gospel, if we're going to be faithful to our Franciscan tradition, then we have to primarily go to people who are on the margins of society, the poor and the oppressed. Ministry with the poor was one of the primary reasons that I joined the Capuchins. I was always very inspired by many different ministries that I've encountered over the years that focused on building connection with the poor getting to know people. Uh, that's one of the blessings of the food truck ministry these last three years. We frequently go to the same locations. We serve about 120 to 140 people about six times a month with the food truck. And so we frequently see the same people. And so that really does provide us an opportunity to evangelize and to share with others in little ways. Uh, just this morning, I thought, a person who was speaking with me said it so beautifully. He came up to me and he said, thank you for showing us your God rather than telling us about your God. And that experience really spoke to me this morning. Poverty in and of itself is never a good thing. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. The idea of Capuchin vow of poverty is to voluntarily give up one's possessions in order to be empty talk about being empty in scripture so that God can fill us. The Capuchin Vow of Poverty comes up a lot during our vocation retreats because people want to know the practicalities of it. What can you have? What can you not have, right? Um, and that's important to a degree to know those things, but that's not the heart of what Francis was seeking when he was seeking Lady Poverty, as he called her. For Francis, poverty was an imitation of Christ, kenosis, his total self-emptying to be ultimately and utterly abandoned to the providence of his father. We don't wish to be poor for the sake of being poor. It's not about trying to look poor. It's not about uh, the externals. Externals matter some, but the more important thing is our internal and our willingness to no longer be in possession of different things that we would like control. Uh, poverty is a lack of control, and that allows God to be in control of our lives. And so at the heart of Franciscan poverty is this understanding that we look only to the Lord, that we rely on the Lord for everything, that we don't cling to anything of this world. That's why Francis wouldn't allow his friars to beg for more than three days provisions. He felt it was an, an insult to the providence of God. What's at the heart of Franciscan poverty is a radical, radical abandonment to the providence and love of the Father. It certainly can you know, help us at times to be able to relate to people who are struggling because we can relate to not having every single need met. Uh, a lot of times in our culture, if you want something, you feel like you need it, you know, and our vow of poverty does sometimes uh, not just hopefully open us up to God, but helps us to be able to relate with others who are struggling. But that's not our goal. Our goal is not to, uh, to be in struggle, but to be connected more to the Lord. I think the value of, of living out a vow of poverty while serving people who are poor was really uh, made evident by uh, St. Dominic when he was uh, beginning his order. There were a lot of heretical groups that were going around railing against the church, railing against the hierarchy, the scandal. And these groups, these heretical groups, were living very, very poor penitential lifestyle. And because of this, 
people were listening to them. And so Dominic quickly realized if we're going to be fruitful in our preaching, if we're going to be convincing, we need to live lives that are equally as convincing. And so he formed this order of preachers that would live a very poor lifestyle, but that would preach in support of the church to bring people back to the church. And I think that's also uh, very relevant for us today, that if we're going to be convincing in our preaching and in our evangelization, that we have to live a gospel life. And if you're going to live a gospel life, you can't get away from the words of Jesus. You know, he says, take nothing for the journey. You know, no walking stick, no bag, no second tunic. And so if we're going to be convincing in our preaching, we have to do what Jesus said to do. Otherwise, like Paul says, we're just a clanging symbol. The most important thing is to realize that everything that you have, whether it's your family, whether it's the relationships you have at church, the different connections you have, the possessions that you have, everything is a gift from God. And so if you view that as a gift that you have received, you can ask yourself the question, what is God asking me to share with others? God has gifted you with many, many wonderful things, and hopefully you express thanks for that. And rather than focusing on things that perhaps you don't have, look at what you currently possess and then asking God, what can I share with others? The importance of, of living a, a simple life, I think, is, is integral for all Christians because there's constantly the temptation to fill the emptiness inside of our hearts with material things, whether that's a new car or the, the latest phone or, you know, the big house. We think these things are going to fill us, but because we were created with an infinite desire, and that infinite desire can only be fulfilled by God. Anything finite is never going to satisfy us. It's going to satisfy us temporarily, but then we're going to want something else and something else and something else. And so trying to live a simple life and a life where prayer has an, uh, an essential part is going to help us to grow in holiness.